So let's say it's the early 2000s. You just got back from a week-long vacation where you took a bunch of photos with your brand new digital camera. And you're thinking of inviting a bunch of people over to watch a slideshow of those pictures to brag about how great of a photographer you think you are. Well, instead of having everybody huddle around your 15-inch CRT monitor, Microsoft was here with just the right piece of tech you needed to get those photos onto your TV. Floppy disks. That's right, back in 2001, Microsoft released the TV Photo Viewer, which, although it looks like a three and a half inch floppy drive, actually connects to your TV and can be controlled with the included remote. And I recently found this one at a thrift store that appears to have never been used before. So let's change that. Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. So when you think of floppy diskettes and cameras, chances are you picture the Sony Mavica. And you might think that this piece of hardware was made specifically for Mavica models that stored images on floppy disks. After all, it seems like the perfect solution. Just pop this disk out of your Mavica, put it into this thing, and go through your photos on a TV. But although you could do that just fine, the TV photo viewer was designed for use with all digital cameras, as it included a piece of software to make a photo album of up to 40 images that were optimized for TV viewing on your PC that you could then write to a floppy diskette to put into this thing. Now you might ask, why floppy diskettes? Well, although they were certainly on a downward trend at this time, they were still pretty widely available and were super affordable. Heck, if you had a computer at home, chances are you probably had a couple of these lying around in some drawer somewhere. So for a price of $159, you could repurpose those diskettes to make some digital photo albums. Microsoft even had a promotion going on where they would include some pre-made albums, a $15 info book on digital photography, and a $50 coupon that you could use on Microsoft products, all for the same price, for a limited time. Now, we don't have any of those extras in this box, as this is just the standard package, but let's go ahead and open it up, and I'll show you what you would have received. So, as far as I can tell, everything is still in here. We've got this bag of two floppy diskettes. One of them is a quick tour, which contains a product overview of the photo viewer, and there's also a blank floppy diskette that you can use to make your first photo album with this thing. We also have a C that contains the necessary software to make those albums on your computer. And right here we have the drive itself. We'll come back to that, or the photo viewer, I should say. Definitely, I mean, it is a floppy disk drive, but it's just not gonna behave like a standard one. We've got an RCA cable to connect it to your TV. We have the remote and we've got the power adapter right here. And last but not least, we've got a couple pieces of documentation. This is a bit of a quick start guide, so it tells you, you know, how to put batteries in the remote, connect it to your TV, and how to uh, put a floppy disk into it. And right here we have the full user's guide, which is a whole 16 pages. So yeah, this is a pretty, you know, simple piece of technology to figure out. It's not the most complicated thing in the world, uh, but who knows, you may have to refer back to this as we're uh, going through the album creation process. But for now, I'm going to uh, set all this stuff aside so we can take a closer look at the uh, drive itself. I'm probably gonna call this a drive uh, multiple times throughout this video, but the photo viewer itself. So we'll uh, remove this uh, piece of tape here if it wants to cooperate with us. There we go. And so here it is. Yeah, this thing definitely looks brand new. So you've got a power button. You've got uh, a back and forward button. You've got auto. You've got the uh, diskette eject button. And uh, up here, you've got a sticker. And oh yeah, it looks like uh, that, has, <laughs> that has been on here for a while. You can see it's actually, uh, you know, we've got all this residue here. So we're just gonna leave that there for now, but it looks like you were supposed to take that off. Really simple port selection on the back. You've got video out, video in, if you had like a VCR already hooked up to your TV and you wanna just have the signal pass through when you're not using the photo viewer. And you've got a power port. And yeah, that's literally all there is to it. So we're gonna go ahead and plug this thing into my TV and we'll try out uh, the quick tour and we'll see what that's all about. And then we'll go through the process of actually making a digital photo album on a Windows XP machine. All right, so we've got everything hooked up. We've got two AA batteries in the remote, which by the way has the same buttons as what we have on the front of the device itself, but it also adds a rotate button as well. So we're gonna go ahead and power it on. And it should ask us, there it is, to put in a floppy diskette. So we're gonna pop in that quick tour diskette and uh, see what's on it. Now apparently, according to the documentation I found, 
there should be images from Corbis. Now, I'm not sure if those are on this diskette or if they're on the uh, CD with the software that you use to actually make your own uh, photo diskettes. So we're going to uh, hit forward here to see what we got. There it is. Welcome to Microsoft TV Photo Viewer. So we're going to hit forward. So here it tells you what you can do with it. There's 15 of these slides. So uh, whoops, I skipped uh, over number three there let's go back you can search for a picture by holding down the back or forward button i uh, I, I read that in the manual uh digital photos will look great on your tv screen i sure hope they will even panoramic shots which are resized to fit your tv check that out and hey look at that exactly what i said in the intro uh invite your friends and family over to see your latest vacation photos i i have not taken a look at this before so that was a total coincidence you can make flashcards. okay or use TV Photo Viewer as a screensaver for your TV. That's a great idea. I did not think of that. But yeah, you could just like have your TV on with, you know, a photo slideshow going on just as you're going about your day. You know, you might have people over for a party or something, just kind of some nice ambient stuff going on in the background. So how do you put your own photos onto a floppy diskette? I've been wondering that myself. Obviously, we just use the software, but it tells you how to do that there. Now, this is interesting. It looks like, even though it said you can put up to 40 photos on this thing, they recommend half of that to get the best picture quality. So it sounds like they're going to diminish the image quality uh, as you put more on there so they can all fit onto a single diskette. Obviously, you only have 1.44 megabytes to work with. Uh, it tells you you can crop them too. That's nice. Plus, include captions and numbering. That's pretty cool. We'll have to check that out. For advanced editing features, we've included Microsoft Picture It Express. That's right. They do include that on the included software. Uh, we have taken a look at Picture It Express before because it's appeared on a few other uh, bundled Microsoft software packages that we've explored on this channel. So I guess we're going to take a look at it again here. And now for the final slide, it says now it's our turn. So we get to make an album ourselves so let's go ahead and pop in the included blank floppy diskette that they have a nice label on by the way into our windows xp computer and uh, we'll see uh, just how easy it is to use the included software to make a digital photo album of our own all right so the auto run on the cd has two options here you can install tv photo viewer or picture at express we're going to start with tv photo viewer now i should mention that microsoft also had a photo viewer viewer program where you could just download that if you didn't actually have the physical hardware uh, if you wanted to like view images or view albums created by the tv photo viewer software uh, so yeah that was a nice thing it, it's sort of like how powerpoint viewer was to microsoft powerpoint uh, so we're going to install it here and we're not going to bother registering it because i guarantee you can't do that anyway and we're done so we'll also get Picture It Express because, I mean, why not? We might as well use it. And this is Picture It Express 2001. I don't think we've taken a look at this particular version before, so at least it'll be somewhat new to us. And that's done. So we'll close out of that, and let's just open up the TV Photo Viewer software. I've got the blank floppy diskette inserted in the computer. Uh, so we just hit Add Pictures, I guess. All right, so we'll go to that IMG folder. And I'm curious, okay, so these sample images, let's see, under pictures, I guess it, yeah, TV photo viewer albums. So there should be sample albums from Corbis, there it is. So let's just open up uh, my pictures here. And it did add these images too, so we got four images in the root of my pictures. So I just made a little sample album here with the four sample photos that are not already in albums of their own. But if we go up here to file and we open up... Uh, an album we go into this folder here let's take a look at uh in space why not um and we're not going to bother saving this one and uh yeah here it is so here are some of the corbis sample images we have 14 of them and then plus this little image here just kind of letting you know they're from corbis at the end uh, and yeah you can crop okay so you can crop rotate you can add captions so yeah you've got five albums here that you can you know pull images from to put in your own albums or modify these however you want but we're going to make a new one so we'll go to new album and it just opens up a new instance of the program so we'll just close out of this one and not save it and we're going to add photos from the img folder on my desktop so i've got um it looks like all of them do not show up i was curious about this because i wanted to see if there was like a maximum size because uh, i do have 
the photo that I took when I went to California to view Bliss in person, which is a wallpaper that's available on my Flickr page if you're interested in putting this on your computer. Um, so yeah, you know, I've got that. This is a pretty large image. It does not even show up in here. So let's try to just, let's add all of these to the album, the ones that it can. Um, oh, I gotta, pff, I have to select them. Why don't we do that? Select all, add to album, and then hit ton adding. Um, and then let's try to add a picture... Um, I guess you can't really add one manually because it just shows you the photos from within here. Um, and I'm sure we can't, like, if we try to drag one of these, like, if we try to drag this in here, yeah, we can't do that. Although, if we do a, uh, a smaller one, will it... Yes, we can. So, you see, so you can just drag photos in if you want to. Oh, you know what? I think it's the file type. I think it just only accepts JPEGs because we've got 10 JPEGs here. And let me go back into this folder and just count. We've got, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, it just does not accept PNGs apparently. So that's where Picture It Express comes in because we should be able to open this up and uh, we'll agree, sure, and not register. I mean, that makes sense because PNGs are inherently larger than JPEGs when it comes to file size. So uh, it's not that unreasonable for it to not accept. Uh, PNGs. So I just, where's like just an open dialogue? What, what is this? Where I just want to find, oh, it, okay. That's great. It just crashed. <laughs> Let's try that again. Okay. We have hit somewhere else. This is so annoying. I just want like a regular file browser, desktop, IMG. Okay. So let's open up bliss 2021. Oh no, it's larger than the maximum size. Microsoft picture to express can open. Uh, does not run as quickly with larger photos. It looks like it's still going to open it though. Okay, so there we go. So we're just going to save this as a JPEG. 13 megabytes down to 400 kilobytes, and it's definitely lowering the dimensions of the image as well. It doesn't show them here, but I just uh, did this on my capture computer here. And uh, I just saved the PNG as a JPEG, and the JPEG of this is 2.58 megabytes in size, which obviously can't even fit on a floppy disk. So it's definitely lowering the uh, dimensions of that image as well. But at least we can, you know, get that on here. So if we go back to TV and Photo Viewer here, so we've got uh, 11 images now. But I think this is a pretty good variety of just images here. So we'll say done adding. And let's say we want to crop this one maybe. So we'll click on crop here. And uh, yeah, we want to get just a closer uh, view. Let's maybe uh, expand this a little bit like that. And hit OK. And there we go. So that's how easy it is to crop things. So we can preview picture. And there it is. So we can add captions to all of these. All right, so that's all done. I've added a bunch of captions. And why don't we, I was just thinking, let's go to my pictures here and just add these uh, sample photos here to the album. Why not? I'm not gonna add captions to these ones. So now we're up to 15, that's a nice number. So let's go ahead and save this uh, to TV Photo Viewer Albums. We'll call this cool and then we will write it to a floppy disk. And oh, look at that. It's going to give us the option to write here. So we'll say yes. And sure, we'll include a title page. We'll just call this uh, My Cool Photos. And go to advanced settings here. So I don't want the number to show on the picture. Uh, we can hide captions if you want to. So that is nice. If you wanted to make like a version of your album with captions and one without them, uh, you could just easily change that option here. And we'll change the auto interval to three seconds. We'll make it uh, super, super quick here and create floppy disk. And we're done. So we're going to do as it says and eject the demo disk here. And we'll pop in our freshly made photo album and check it out. There's all of our photos. I believe if we just hit forward here. It'll start advancing through them. And there's all the captions. We can rotate these photos by hitting the rotate button on the remote. So I guess that's just gonna, yes. oh, it just rotates the whole thing, including the caption, okay. And there's that one, there's that one. Now, if we hold down the forward button, it should give us, and yeah, it'll give us a little picture in picture thing down there, and then we can go through and, you know, find the photo we want. So let's say I wanna jump to this one. I think if we just uh, let go, I mean, I'm not holding anything yet, just eventually selects it, so there we go. And then if we press auto on the remote, 
uh, it will start that automatic slideshow and go through it every three seconds. It would have been nice if you had the ability to change that like from this device itself, but you have to configure that in the album when you create it on your computer. Uh, same with captions. You can't just turn off captions uh, from here. You have to either have them with the images or not when you create the album. And of course, we also have the buttons on the front so we can hit forward and back and turn on auto mode here. But again, there's no rotate button. So if you lost the remote to this thing uh, looks like you're not going to be able to rotate images uh, on the photo viewer anymore so definitely uh, definitely don't lose this and we can also we can turn off auto mode and we should be able to hold down forward and get to the little like thumbnails there and advance through to whichever one we want so yeah I mean it, it's a neat little piece of hardware I, I do wish it had some more functionality like I said about you know enabling and disabling the captions and uh, you know, having, I mean, honestly, having a rotate button on the front of this thing would be nice. That way, if you lost the remote, uh, or if your remote stopped working for whatever reason, you could still use all the functionality of this thing. And again, this thing was 160 bucks back in 2001. I personally probably would not have purchased this for that price. I mean, I think you have to be somebody who uh, did a lot of traveling and took a lot of photos um, for this to really be worth it. Uh, so you could just make a bunch of floppy disk albums, just have all of them and have a, a nice convenient way to view them on your TV. Um, but if you didn't really do that, if you didn't take a lot of photos, um, you know, it's not, I mean, you just have them on your computer and just, you know, view them that way. Still, it was a thing that you could have purchased. And I guess let me know if uh, anybody out there watching this ever used one of these things back then and uh, what you thought of it, because that would be pretty neat to hear. Uh, but yeah, that is going to wrap it up for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, get subscribed, all that good stuff. And if you really enjoyed this video and want to get early access to my future content, I do have a Patreon down below that you can check out, or you could become a channel member. But either way, I want to thank you all so much for watching, and I I will see you in the next video.